So in this video, we are going to look at how you can pass all level chemistry with distinction, how you can get a distinction in all level chemistry. Now, how can you get a distinction in all level chemistry? For you to get a distinction in all level chemistry, you have to be well versed with all the all level topics, as far as the current UNEP setting is concerned. So what are these topics? What are these topics? The current all level topics are one, matter. You have to be well versed with matter, you have to be well versed with mixtures and pure substances. You have to be well versed with oxygen and its compound, oxidation and reduction, uh, carbon and its compound, nitrogen and its compound, sulfur and its compound, chlorine and its compound. You have to be well versed with uh, metal extractions from ores, electrolysis, uh, what we, know, we call thermochemistry, that is enthalpy changes or what we call energy changes in the chemical reaction, you have to be well versed with what we call rate of reaction and some other topics which we made up might have uh, not talked about, topics like uh, qualitative analysis, more concept, the mother of chemistry, more concept and volumetric analysis. This one here, you must, you must know it into detail. Now, all these topics, now when it comes to examination, these topics, they cannot just bring them on their own. These topics, are, the questions on them are always connected. They are always connected. Now, this all level chemistry has been divided into three papers. This is what we call paper one. Now, this paper one consists of 50 solid objective type questions. 50 solid objective type questions, which you must know into detail. Paper two consists of two sections section A and section B. Section A consists of 10 structured compulsory questions, which are carrying, that is, 50 marks. Section B consists of four semi-structured questions, which a learner or a candidate is supposed to attempt only two, each carrying 15 marks. Now, all giving you a total of 80 marks. That is paper two. Paper three or paper four or paper five consists of two questions. Question one, of course, always comes from volumetric analysis. Then the second question, that is qualitative analysis. Each carrying 25 marks, giving you a total of 50 marks. Now, for you to pass all these three papers very well, for you to get distinction overall in chemistry, you have to be well, well versed with all the topics, you have to be well versed with all the questions and how these questions are set in all these three different papers. Now, all these topics in chemistry all focus majorly on three key areas. And what are these key areas that you need to know for you to pass this chemistry distinction? One, is how to state correct observation and induction. In all these three papers, if you don't know how to state correct observation and induction, you are nowhere. The second one is, of course, uh, that is writing a well-balanced chemical equation. All the three papers talks about writing well-balanced chemical equation. Of course, writing a well-balanced chemical equation most hand in hand with stating a uh, correct observation and deduction. Then finally, the third one is, of course, mole concept, what we always consider to be the mother of chemistry. Without the knowledge of mole concept, you cannot get a distinction in chemistry. Now, let us try to look at how these questions are distributed, how these three key areas are distributed as far as, as, far as these three uh, papers are concerned. Now, in paper one, in paper one, out of these 50 solid objective type questions, we always have 10 questions which come from more concept. Time, imagine 10 solid questions from more concept. There must be a question on empirical formula, whether you like it or not. There must be a question on Avogadro's law or the molar gas volume. There must be a question of percentage composition. There must be a question on what you call calculation, calculation of the concentration in moles per liter, what we call molarity. There must be a question on calculation of concentration in grams per liter. And there must be a question on, of course, uh, uh, Avogadro's law. We talked about that. And then there is also Gay's Losaka's law. All these questions oh, on all these areas will always be there and must always be there as far as the current UNEB setting of paper one chemistry is concerned. Now, you also have to be well versed with, of course, atomic structure and chemical bonding for you to pass that paper one very well. We always have around eight to nine questions out of those 50, eight to nine questions. Remember, 10 are already coming from more concept. Then there must also be, uh, you have to be well versed with 
Another area that is none other than oxidation and reduction reaction, what we call redox reaction and displacement reactions. We always have around six questions along that area. So be well versed with that area also. Of course, more concept is everywhere. More concept is everywhere. So for you to pass that paper two, I mean paper one, very well. For you to get around 40 over 50, those three key, uh, three key areas must be put into consideration. Now, coming to paper two. Paper two, of course, the paper is out of 80, as I earlier said. But now, out of this 80, the three key areas must be put into consideration. Talking about a mole concept, writing a well-balanced chemical equation, making correct observation and deduction. Now, out of those 80 marks, 40, 40, that is a half of the marks will always come from these three key areas. 40 marks will always come from these three key areas. Now, those are the 40 marks which are many, of course, you now get them from those other part of the, uh, those other topics as far as all level setting is concerned. So if, if you can now get these 40 marks correctly by revising these three key, area, uh, three key areas into detail, you are good to go for that distinction. Coming to paper three, this paper three, when you look at that first question, that is the, the question that comes from volumetric analysis. Of course, more concept is being the mother of chemistry. You cannot now leave that one. Writing a well-balanced chemical equation. Of course, now for you to, uh, to get all those 25 marks, you have to write a well-balanced chemical equation. Now, if you can write a well-balanced chemical equation and you can have conc ideas, concrete ideas on more concept, why do you have to fail getting the 20, uh, 25 marks? Coming to the second question. That is the quantitative analysis question. I talked of making correct observation and deduction. Now, if you're well versed with your uh, correct observation and deduction, of course, the 20 marks, 25 marks, there is a walkover. In general, passing all level chemistry is just, I don't know what to say. Very easy. But you have to be well versed with all the topics because those topics are connected. They cannot just bring a question on one topic uh, alone, though some questions may come that way. For example, they can say maybe, uh, copper 2 nitrate has been heated strongly until no further change took place. State what was observed. Maybe Roman number one. Roman number two. Write the equation for the reaction that took place. Now, if you don't have conc ideas on effects on salts, acid bases and salts, you are gone. The B part of the question may be they can bring a question on qualitative analysis. Maybe to the residue was added. So the amount of oxide solution clockwise until in excess. They are not bringing in qualitative analysis. So if you're not well versed in qualitative, qualitative analysis, automatically you will not answer that question. It's very easy to get distinction. Distinction in chemistry. So with all what I've spoken right now, don't forget to subscribe to our channel that is Givian Academy and turn on the notification button so that every post, every related post of ours will always be updated with. Thank you.